What's up everyone, welcome back to Laceup channel. My name is Mickey. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a full demo of our warehouse management system. I feel like if you're shopping for a WMS, if you're in the market for a WMS, the WMS that you end up purchasing, whether it's ours or someone else's, needs to fulfill a certain set of requirements. Now, our application is catered to the distribution niche and we cover all of that functionality. And in this demo, I'm gonna cover the key features, the key components, of a WMS that you need to have in order to ensure you get the maximum return on investment from your system. So let's get right into it. So this is our warehouse management system that runs on Android and on the screen, you'll see the functions that we cover as well as the functions that any other WMS that you're evaluating should cover. We're gonna start here with receiving. When you receive, you should be able to receive a purchase order, create an item receipt, or receive a transfer order. Now, for those of you that don't know what a transfer order is, a transfer order is a transfer for those of you that have multiple warehouses and you need to pick, pack in warehouse A and eventually receive in warehouse B. But for the purposes of this demo, we're simply gonna receive a purchase order. I'm gonna go here into the vendor. Now, obviously a good WMS, if you had a scanner, you'd be able to scan the PO number and it would automatically pull up the PO. We support that, but because I'm using a regular Samsung device, I'm gonna go ahead and select the PO by hand. Now, once I've selected the PO, the system should give you the option of receiving individual items into inventory, receiving a pallet or receiving a mixed pallet. So we're gonna go ahead and receive a pallet of a single item. To do that, I'm gonna generate a pallet ID. So that's pallet number 72. Now bear in mind, I don't have any pallet capacity set up in this demo. If I did, the system would automatically tell me how many pallets I should be receiving of an item. Nonetheless, here are the items that I'm going to receive in this purchase order. So I'm gonna go ahead and receive this ice cube sleeve and save that item onto the pallet. So once I'm done, I hit save and I've just successfully generated pallet ID number 72. Let's go ahead and generate pallet ID 73 against that same purchase order. Okay, and now I'm gonna create a pallet for these 20 here. Now bear in mind here we've got expiration date. In the case of this item, RWMS allows you to configure parameters such as expiration date, lot number, whatever inventory parameter by which you wanna track inventory. You should be able to track the inventory in your warehouse by any parameter of the product, whether it be serial number, lot number, expiration date, or multiple configurations of those parameters. In this case, I've configured the system to support expiration date. So I'm gonna create this pallet as well. So now I've created pallet 73, and that's now sitting in my receiving dock. Thus far, I've received two lines of the PO, created two single items pallets, and now because I haven't completed that PO, the remainder of what has not been received in that PO is still open here in the system, but for, for argument's sake or for time's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward to the check-in process. So the check-in process allows you to take a pallet that you've received that's sitting in your receiving dock and check that pallet into a slot. Um, a good system, one that does this process for a distributor, should give you proximity or closest proximity to a picking slot. So if I were to walk up to this first pallet, pallet 33 for example, and scan it, it would tell me exactly which backstock locations in closest proximity to the picking slot that pallet should go. Now this goes the same for individual items. If you just have individual items and they go straight into a picking slot, the WMS should have the functionality to recognize that and direct you to put the product away in the proper location. So I'm gonna go ahead and check in that pallet into that overstock location. So now that the product's been checked in, let's assume for a moment that you're a distributor. You've got 10 sales orders and those sales orders need to be picked and packed for tomorrow. In our back office system, you're able to capture those 10 orders, create a wave which generates your replenishment tasks. Now replenishment tasks are tasks that need to be uh, executed by your forklift operator to rotate pallets from above to below. These replenishment tasks should be auto kicked off when you create a wave to let you know what you need to replenish before you start the picking process. So to see what open replenishment tasks we have, we go to replenishment and it shows us in location DR999, I need to transfer pallet 12 and I need to transfer pallet 13. 
So we're gonna go ahead and transfer pallet 12, and I'm gonna confirm that quantity. And because we've got two pallets that we need to transfer, you'll see that we have a second pallet, pallet 13, and I need to take it from DR999 to target location DA034A. Now bear in mind, I don't have a scanner. Normally you would scan the pallet and scan the location it's going to. But for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this pallet as well. So now that we've executed our replenishments and our product's been rotated down using FIFO or FIFO or whatever method of keeping inventory you currently use, we're ready to start picking the, 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 the inventory. So to start picking transactions, we go into pick order. Now, if you rewind this video a couple seconds back, we talked about creating a wave. A wave creates your replenishments, but it ultimately creates your pick list. These are all the pick lists that have been assigned to me. I'm the picker. Now bear in mind again, I'm not using a scanner, I'm using a Samsung device, but you can pick using a scanner, a regular device if you don't wanna scan, and voice pick if you're at a level moving a certain number of cases per month that it justifies the return on investment. So let me go ahead and go into this order here which is assigned to me. And here are the items that have to be picked. The first item is the fill three gallon vanilla and it's located in CA999.9 and I've got to pick one. To pick this, I walk up to the location and I scan the location. When I do that, the system's going to pick this line for me and return me back to the pick list with a green check mark indicating that I finished that pick. Now again, I'm doing all of this manually because I don't have a way to scan the location. Let me go ahead and go to the second location, pick again, I'm gonna work my way down this pick list here. Let me pick 10 of these, one of these. Now while picking, you might find the situation that you get to the bin location and it's short. So that happens when somebody commits an error during picking or you had a misreceiving error or you received the wrong quantity and when you replenish the pallet, the pallet was actually short in the first place. So if either your bin is short or your replenishment was short, you can indicate that here in the device to let someone in the back office know that they have to go cycle count that location uh, to be able to adjust that inventory that was short out of inventory. All right, so I've just gone through the pick list and picked almost every item on the entire pick list. And I didn't want you guys to have to watch me sit there and, and pick over 50 items on this pick list. Nonetheless, you'll see that the pick list is sorted in sequence, every location that I've just hit in sequence, me walking up the warehouse structure, up and down the warehouse structure, picking from my picking slots. I've got one item left in this FD054A picking slot. Now, I wanted to mention this item specifically because even though I've executed this test case picking in full in every picking slot, there are scenarios where you get to the picking slot and you're short for some reason. That's why a good WMS should allow you to indicate whether or not you're short on something, whether or not something is damaged in the location, and the WMS should trigger a cycle count to your back office administrator to go and count that location and edit out or, or short out that inventory. Now, for those of you that don't know, shorts occur when either there was a misreceiving, so you receive something incorrectly, or during the replenishment process, you transferred down a pallet that the quantity on that pallet was incorrect, or in the picking slot itself, you had one of your selectors pick more than what was ordered in a previous order. So that's what these actions are for, and a good WMS should trigger a cycle count or a corresponding task for the inventory if the picker indicates either damaged or short. Now for the purposes of this demo, I'm gonna go ahead and pick this line in full. And now, I believe I've picked everything on the order and I'm ready to finalize. So if I go to continue to finalize, I'm now finalizing that pick list and I've created a pack. A pack is the pallet that now goes into my uh, dock to be shipped out onto the truck. Now, if you use a good WMS, the WMS could palletize for you and show you how to place the product on the pallet, how much cubed fits on the pallet, and the WMS should compute how many pallets you're gonna need and how many pallets go onto the truck when you're creating the wave. In this scenario, because I'm doing a very uh, simplified version of picking, I've created the pack after picking the pick list itself. Nonetheless, the pack will show you what it contains. So assuming that this was a pallet, you would see all of the lines that it contains, and now that pallet is staged, ready to be put 
on the truck. So now that I've picked, the next function in a WMS is being able to ship whatever pallets are sitting in my dock. So you'll also see here I've got pack 23 with the ship via 5306, assuming that that's a route, that's the route that it's gonna go on, and a pack 24 that's gonna go on that route again. Again, I don't have a scanner, but normally what would happen at this juncture is I would scan that pallet and I would ship it to the truck. Then I would scan the subsequent pallet and I would ship it to the truck. Again, if you use pallet optimization, which computes your pallets prior to picking and generates a pick list per pallet, what should happen is those pallets should be loaded on the truck in the same sequence that they're going to be unloaded from the truck. That's another function that you're looking for in AWMS when shipping. So we've done receiving, check-in, pick, and ship. I think some other important functions to talk about are cycle counting. Um, being able to cycle count entails either you create a task that goes down to a, a manager so that they can execute a cycle count at a location. Normally people do this when they want to count. Let's say you've got 100 picking slots, you, you have a month to count them, you want to count each picking slot at least once. A good WMS should shoot off a cycle count task that goes down to the handheld, let's say three a day, so that your staff can count those three picking slots. A good WMS as well should allow you to walk up to any location just like this, select the area, scan the location, and be able to add and adjust the inventory. Now bear in mind, being able to adjust inventory and do cycle counting should be a privilege only given to those that have administrative privileges in the operation. That's probably gonna be your warehouse manager. They'll be the one doing cycle counts. So we've just done a cycle count on that location. We added 10 of that item, which indicates an overage. Now that was a simplified version of doing cycle counts. Again, a good WMS will support either pre-created, pre-generated cycle count tasks, cycle counts created off a short or off a damage in picking, or just a blind cycle count where you walk up to a location, scan the location, and enter its contents. So in, addi in addition to cycle counts, we've got returns. Now returns are extremely important because you've got either a pack return or a route return. Normally, if you ship something out to a customer, you're either gonna get back the pack through a carrier from that customer, or if you have your own trucks, that truck's going to return with inventory that was left over on the truck. These modules are intended to be able to scan that product coming back, go through a Q&A process, whether it's a damaged or return area, and ultimately take the good product that was returned and return it back to its bin location. So th that completes the majority bulk functionality of a very simple WMS that automates receiving, put away, picking, packing, shipping, returns, and replenishment. At, in the previous video, we talked about voice picking. When you do voice picking, every pick list in this screen will go to a headset where you say start work and the voice pick, as you saw in the previous video, will allow you to, uh, or will guide you as to where you need to go in the warehouse. You have to verify a check digit and it'll tell you how many cases you need to pick. But again, I only recommend voice picking after you watch that video and you ensure that the voice pick is going to generate a return on investment for you. Now, in summary, We've covered receiving, put away, pick, ship, returns, cycle count, transfers, and replenishments. Those are the very basic warehouse functions, but the only objective of a good WMS is to give you three key data points. Now, I'm not gonna get into purchasing. We'll make a purchasing video which shows our purchasing module or production. We'll get into those videos later. But when we talk about the three key data points, we wanna see employee productivity, we wanna see cases per hour picked or units per hour picked, and we wanna see order accuracy. Those are the three variables that will allow you to, to translate all of this productivity into your, in your warehouse into a tangible value so that you can then set a target and improve those three metrics. In order accuracy, if you're a warehouse that's operating 96 to 97%, um, by going to 98 to 99%, you could be putting five to 10 to $100,000 back into your pockets every single day. And being able to compute that order accuracy when you do distribution is critical because if you're a distributor that has a customer that'll fine you for taking the wrong product to the store, that's an instant $1 for $1 savings every time you don't make a picking mistake. But then you have cases per hour. I've seen that most companies operate in the range of 90 to 120 cases per hour picked by their selectors when they're using paper. 
Well, when you go to a simple scanning system, you should be in the range of 130 to 160 cases an hour. And ultimately, when you go to voice picking, you should be way into the 200s. I've seen customers even upwards of 300. So this system, by just giving you the cases per hour by selector, will allow you to move all of your mediocre selectors to the mean, and all of your mean selectors will then succeed even further, thus increasing your productivity, decreasing your picking hours, and ultimately allowing you to cut pickers from the staff. And last but not least, employee productivity. Employee productivity shows you how much unproductive time the person in the warehouse had throughout the day. Because we're logging every activity that the warehouse staff does here, the, the unproductive time is very easy to track. It's the time that they're not on here. Well, if you subtract from that time, the time that they should have been on breaks, that gives you the true amount of time that they were sitting outside of your box or outside of your warehouse smoking a cigarette or hanging out with their friends. And ultimately, you wanna get that unproductive time from an hour down to about 30 minutes. Ultimately, by the end of this implementation and getting a WMS, you should be able to increase your cases per hour, increase your order accuracy, increase your employee productivity, improve your purchasing, improve your, your uh, inventory tracking, and all of those variables combined, as we showed you on the ROI spreadsheet video, should return a significant amount of money for your business. So I hope that gave you some context in terms of what a good warehouse management system should do. If you're in the market for a WMS, make sure that you get these features in your system. And besides that, let me know what you think about the video. Go down below, give me a comment, give me a, you know whether or not you agree or disagree. If you'd like to see more features or if you, or if you wanna discuss anything that you want me to make a video on in the future, just comment down below. Besides that, like, subscribe, all that stuff, and I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care, peace.